Hey everyone, I'm Alex Freeman, Calm 300, and my video is on Black and Latin America, Haiti, and Dominican Republic. Now, before I even get into the video, I like to say, if you're watching it on YouTube, the formatting of the video is extremely glitchy, and it keeps buffering, and it is formatted improperly, so you're better off watching it on the Canopy app. Also, once you start watching the video, the sequence in which the order of information is given, it's all over the place. He's the um, narrator starts off by giving the information. There was in present time, then he moves all the way back to the 1800s, then come back to present time. Then he starts talking about several years earlier. Now, besides all that, he did a good job on separating the th two countries. He first starts off in Dominican Republic, gives that information, then travels across the border to give us the information on Haiti. Now, I'm going to read some facts about um, Haiti and the Dominican Republic because what I focused on for this entire review was really on the systematic racism that Dominican Republicans, Dominican Republic created to enforce onto the Haitians. Now, um, I start off with Dominican Republic. It is a country on the island of His Hispaniola, uh, more of mixed races and traditions. Uh, because there, a lot of people, they're more, they're more trying to whitewash everything. Uh, they're proud. They really focus more on their proud Hispanic roots. And they consider their roots to be from Spain. They believe Spain is the motherland. Uh, after the Dominican Republic declared themselves independent from Haiti, work was needed because there was no more slavery. So work was needed. And what they did was imported many Haitians to do the work that Dominican Republic is considered beneath them. And that right there, the entire ideology fueled that that system that um, Dominican Republics believed that they were superior human beings against the Haitians. Also, the president during the 1930 to 1961, which was General Rafael Trulio, he helped enforce anti-Haitian racism. He, re he did that to rebuild Dominican Republic as a white nation. Lastly, in 1937, the president of the time ordered his troops to kill all Haitians in the Northwest region. They killed roughly 15,000 Haitians within that period. And now for the, the Haitian uh, information. Uh, Haiti is a country also in Hispaniola. They're both on the same island. The only thing that separates them is their borders. Haitians have many statues of their black leaders, while Dominican Republic only has white or whitewashed leaders. Like their black leaders, they literally whitewash them. If you look in Dominican Republic, if you look at their statues of their black leaders, they alter the black leaders' uh, features, such as his, his nose, to make him look more white. In Haiti, many young people are eager to learn the traditions of their African ancestors. Uh, Haitian's Creole is based off of 18th century French, but has many ties to West African languages and traditions. Haitian's Voodoo is a sacred and complex religion in which incorporates many religions, belie religious belief from West African traditions and religions. On August 14th, 1791, Haitians got together, they performed voodoo rituals and attacked their oppressor and later won their independence and freedom with the help of their great general. At the time, their um, oppressors were the French. Toussaint Louver, who died in exile in a French prison, he was the general in which came up with most of the ideas on how to attack the French men. So some of the questions now I'm going to answer are, how are blacks impacted during those time period? Now, the term blacks for this specific nation will refer only to the Haitians because the Haitians was the one that accepted and probably embraced their blackness. So therefore, blacks were murdered, they were disrespected, and even treated as less than humans. Next question is ways in which the perpetrators gain now and then. The perpetrators, for again, this instance, will be Dominican Republicans. 
uh, they gained then by exploding the extreme poverty in which in which those of Haiti Haitians were enduring and also through the systematic racism the Dominican Republic created and then now they're still using those same systems to oppress um, the Haitians I also have a link for the current news in uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti it will be provided below and some of the news is it's from the Dominican today and it reported on February 25th 2020 it was just several days ago uh, it reported that tensions at the border is at ease and that sovereignty on the border between Dominican Republic and Haiti is safe though that quote came from the defensive minister of Santo Domingo uh, Rubian Dario Paulino. Yeah, that's a classy name. The statement is followed by a photo of a dog at the border caption, Dejan Bon. Even a dog feels safe. So basically, the picture shows a dog just laying at the border and telling us that the dog feels safe. They're trying to make us believe that there's no tension at the border at all. You know, this connects with historical event in the documentary because throughout the documentary we learn of what happened at the borders of um, Dominican Republic and Haiti when the president ordered the massacre of over 1,500 Haitians. So tensions have always been high and they will continue to be high. Now, what does this mean to me and others in the black diaspora? To me, this means borders which are imaginary lines, they're just like race, imaginary categories in which humans put ourselves in to classify someone worth as a person. Blacks have truly suffered the most throughout history. And a question that comes to my mind about the country is, why don't Haitians just rise up and kill their oppressors? In this term, their oppressors will be Dominican Republicans.